Hey ladies, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm doing my wedding makeup tutorial. So this is an almost exact replica of what I did on my wedding day. I've used, like I said, probably about 90% of the same products that I used on that day. The other 10% I just don't have. Um, so I've used something similar, but I talk about that as I'm doing it. So um, I hope you enjoy it and I hope you get some tips and tricks um, if you're thinking of doing your own makeup. And um, if you want it to look anything like this, um, then please do keep watching. I've already moisturised my skin and I've also put a primer on. On my wedding day I did use a Smashbox oil-free primer um, but I don't have that anymore. So today I used this one which is the Dr. Jart Recover Primer and this one just needs a little bit of time to sink in. So I have let that sink in and we're ready for foundation. Um, I'm using a Real Techniques Expert Face Brush and Revlon Colour Stay in Buff. Um, I don't know if this will be too dark because I had gone on some beds before my um, wedding day, so I'm just getting a little bit onto the brush. Um, I do tip it straight onto the brush, I'm not one of these that puts it onto my hand. And then just dot a bit around and blend in. Now, the only thing about this foundation is it does need blending quickly, so um, I do sometimes put just a little bit in the middle and blend it and then do the chin and forehead, but um, whatever way you do it, you do need to work pretty fast to blend it in, but the good side of that is that it is one that will last all day long so um you won't need to worry about it coming off or you know just it wears really well through the day i redid my i redid no i touched up my eyeliner and i think i redid my lipstick and that is about all um maybe put on a little bit more blusher and bronzer you know just a general sort of touch up like that but i certainly didn't do my redo my foundation because it didn't need it um, and that was from, I put it on at about 10 o'clock in the morning and that was, the touch up I was doing was about 7 o'clock, maybe earlier, maybe 6 o'clock um, and it was still okay so that's really good. Because actually if you're doing your own makeup it's hard to decide when, when to do your makeup because I thought well part of me wanted to do it like first thing to get it, you know, so that it was done and I didn't have to worry about how much time I had. But then I wanted to do it as late as possible so it had the best chance of lasting as long as possible. Um, I have just gone lightly over my eyes although I'm going to prime them as well. Um, yeah, so I sort of timed it so that I didn't, I didn't want to feel rushed but I didn't want to do it too early. But it worked out all fine. So that is the foundation. Um, as you can see I've got kind of a bit of blemishes going on at the moment so and I do quite a lot of the time so this is what I use for my cover up it's the Estee Lauder Maximum cover it's actually a foundation I'm just using the detailer brush from um, the Real Techniques collection but this cover up is one that it just lasts and lasts it's I've been using this since I was about a teenager I think it's one of the first products I bought um, from a high-end brand so I just pat it on and then use my finger to kind of smudge it out um, and it is a foundation and I have actually used it as a foundation when I had when I was in my 20s and obviously my skin was a lot um, less lined and whatnot because it's so so thick you, you have to be really careful and even then I used it with moisturizer that's how thick it is but if you've got anything major you want to cover then this is pretty good stuff and like I said it lasts all day so you don't need to worry about it coming off like you know when I've got it on my chin I can like kiss Kevin and whatnot and it doesn't come off so that's um, really good so that's kind of the face done um, and then I'm going to prime my eyes oh no I'm actually just going to put a little bit of this under my eyes this is the L'Oreal True Match La Touche Magique this is the best under eye um, so it's a concealer but I just use it as a kind of eye brightener and you can use your finger I'm just using the P82 which I did on my wedding day because I just felt like brushes were a little bit more luxurious and I you know I just wanted it to be a really nice experience doing my makeup so that just gives a little bit of light under the eyes which is nice and I will just finish it off with my fingers Fing fingers are sometimes just the best thing to give the nicest finish and fingers is that exactly what I'm going to use for my eye primer which is this it's not actually an eye primer it's the MAC Studio Sculpt Concealer um, but this did me proud on my wedding day it did keep my eyeshadow in perfect condition all day and I did not need to touch it at all 
and I've got some pictures of me in the evening that are actually quite nice as well. Um, so I was really pleased with that. Just go under ever so slightly. I don't want to go under completely because it's a very thick concealer, that one. So that's that. Then we'll start on the eyeshadow. So the first colour I'm using is Malt. And it's from MAC. They're all from MAC except for the eyebrow colour. Um, or the blending colour. So the first one is Malt. And it's this one. And I'm using the Louise Young LY38A, which is a crease brush. And so I'm just going to load that up. And I'm just doing the crease first it's a nice sort of warm pinky brown color I normally um, go for yellow based colors but well obviously you can change up on your eyes anyway but um, the one thing they tell you is on your make on your wedding day if you don't wear makeup wear makeup and if you do wear makeup wear more more makeup because like for example if you just wear a tiny little bit of blusher you will come out looking pale so you need to have as much colour as possible um, in your makeup. I mean, I don't mean like, you know, red lipstick or blue eyeshadow, unless that's what you want. Um, but you do need a touch of colour. So that's why I went for malt for the kind of crease colour, because it's a nice warm colour. So I'm just loading up the brush and keep doing that windscreen wiper action and as I'm doing it I'm sort of I'm not being too careful with the brush actually because this is a great brush to blend as you're going. I really love Louise Lung Louise Lung Louise Young brushes. They're um up there in my top five I would say. Maybe even top three. Yeah top three. I do like matte brushes as well. Um, and then the other one out of the three would be e.l.f. I think because e.l.f. are inexpensive and the brushes, not all of them, but most of the brushes are really good in fact I think I'm using a couple of e.l.f. brushes in this look so that's the crease colour done and then I'm going to go on to the inner lid colour and for that I'm using vanilla which is just a beautiful colour with a tiny bit of sparkle the brush I'm using is just, you're just looking for a simple eyeshadow brush this is just a Marks and Spencers limited collection one um, so I'm just going to load that up and that is going on the inner lid probably to just a little bit more than halfway um, because I will blend it in with the outer colour so that they're sort of seamless and it's going across most of my lid. This is a beautiful light colour and it's got the tiniest bit of shimmer in it. It's so pretty. Just putting that on my tear duct as well. I wonder if this is the colour, I can feel that this is this eyeshadow is going down quite a bit, you know I'm starting to get to the middle bit and I have never hit pan as they say on an eyeshadow because I've only just been started using eyeshadows in the last year, last year and a bit so um, I'm interested to see which eyeshadow I use up first and this one feels like it's getting near to the, to the middle or even which one like I said I hit pan on a little bit on my tear duct as well. It's all about prettiness today, if possible. <laughs> okay, the next colour we're using is Sable, which is a beautiful plummy brown colour. It's this one here, and I'm using the MAC 239 brush, which is this. It's a flat sort of shader brush. It's just so I can get up quite a bit of colour, and then I'm just packing that on the outside. Outside of the lid. And these are all easy colours to blend, which is good. Um, because when you have your photo taken, the camera picks up any harsh lines. Um, and so the last thing you want is any harsh lines, obviously. And so blending is really important. So I chose colours that were easy to blend because otherwise chances are you wouldn't, they wouldn't blend seamlessly, you know. Um, Okay, so that's the outer colour. Don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna blend that at a later stage. Um, and then just to darken up that outer corner, I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit of handwritten, which is this colour, and I'm using a Stila number four brush. It's a tiny little brush because I only want a little bit just in that corner. 
because obviously we don't want too much of a smoky eye look um, for the wedding day but I just want a light smoky eye and this just gives it a little bit more of a gradient of colour you know and handwritten is a matte colour but it's a another sort of plummy colour so that's that so let's take the MAC 217 and for the brow I'm going to use mostly brulee, my wet and wild brulee which I use for everything. Um, so I'm just going to go over the brow with that and then I'm going to use it on the other side and then I'm going to start blending. So just up by the brow bone and down into that dark corner there. And then without putting any more colour on the brush I'm just going to blend and start in the middle and work out. Start in the middle and work out so that you're not pulling any of the dark colour over into the inner bits. So we're just blending away so that it looks soft, I think is the main idea. Just so that it looks soft, a nice soft smoky look. Okay, so that's the eyeshadow pretty much done. Um, I'm, oh no, I'm going to do one more thing and I'm going to use this MAC 217 brush and I'm going to go in with nylon, which is this. And it's a beautiful kind of highlight colour. Now I don't normally put highlight colour under my brow, but I'm going to today, just a little bit at the top, because it just, it gives um, a really nice colour to the eye, colour, it gives a really nice shape to the eyebrow. Um, and it's just, it's just about those little special extra touches today, isn't it, for your special day. There we go. Okay, so that's the eyeshadow done. Um, I'm going to put my lipstick on now because the lipstick I use is one that um, needs time to set. It's the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Colour in Taupe 615 and then I use the Jane Iredale Lip Liner um, in, also in Taupe. Just going to smudge that out a bit because again no harsh lines today but it does help your lips look a little bit fit, fuller. Okay, so we'll just let that dry and while that is drying we'll do um, some eyeliner so the eyeliner I used is actually it's one of two eyeliners that used and I can't remember which one I used because both pots look exactly the same the one I'm using today is the Inglot 77 matte um, or it may have been makeup atelier gel eyeliner matte but they're both in the same kind of pots um, but I thought Inglot might be easier for you guys to get hold of and they're both as good as each other insofar as they last amazingly. Um, so I'm just going to use, I'm just using my art brush and I'm putting this on the top line. Now what I would say is I take my time doing this because it's really difficult to get a thin line but a thin line is what I want if possible. Again for the wedding day anything that's softer you know. Um, but what I was going to say is that people, a lot of people told me that I couldn't wear a black line on my wedding day. Um, they were very shocked that I wanted to wear a black line. And in fact, one guy, one guy at a makeup counter was just saying, oh my goodness, you absolutely can't do that. It will look awful. And he kind of upset me because I feel comfortable with black lines on my eyes. Now I've gone into the vanilla with that, but um, I'll correct that in a minute. Yeah, I feel really comfortable with the black lines on my eyes. That's what I wear every day, and that's what I'm used to seeing myself. And I wanted to be myself on my wedding day, and I wanted to feel comfortable. Um, and then somebody else at a later stage actually said to me, and she was a makeup artist as well, and she said, wear what you like on your wedding day. You know, if you want to wear red lipstick, wear red lipstick. If you want to wear black lines, wear black lines. And I would agree with that, because... I was worried about the pictures because everybody was telling me the pictures wouldn't look very good. But the pictures looked fine. Because um, I practiced. <laughs> I practiced making sure I could get pictures with an open eye look. Um, 
yeah like I said it was really upsetting to be told that because I just thought oh, no I'm not going to feel comfortable and I tried every other way I tried with brown eyeliner on the top and I tried with grey and I tried with a line on the top but not on the bottom and you know I tried a lot of different things and none of them made me feel comfortable so I did just decide in the end to go with what I'm comfortable with but obviously for you again do whatever makes you feel comfortable so if you want to miss this step then miss this step and either you can do brown eyeliner grey eyeliner no eyeliner um, you could do it in your waterline or you could do none at all you know it's up to you do whatever makes you feel happy um, so what I did do is on the bottom line instead of using black I used Bobbi Brown chocolate shimmer actually I don't think I used the Bobbi Brown chocolate shimmer on the day I think I used makeup atelier but again I don't have that um, but it was basically a dark brown color just so that it wasn't quite so harsh and I kind of put it about three quarters of the way in So again, it's not so harsh. So that's a bit sort of less harsh than, than wearing black um, and I was happy with that. Okay, so that's the eyeshadow done. Um, now we're gonna look at brows. So I used my MAC eyebrow pencil in Lingering to start off with. So started at the inner corner here and then just draw lightly the arch shape that you want and then do the same on the top. then fill in. The other side, same again. Now I think that putting powder over eye eyebrows after you've penciled them kind of softens them a bit because obviously you don't want them looking too harsh. Um, so that's why I haven't done my powder yet and also I like to put powder over my lipstick and then I put another colour on. So that's them done. Then um, that's a kind of waxy pencil, so I'm just going to go over it with a little bit of powder, and I just use Wedge Eyeshadow, Wedge MAC Eyeshadow, and this is an Eco Tools brush, and I'm just going to go over, because what you just want to make sure is that there's no gaps, and that it will last all day, so... And then as a um, final step, I will put on some brow gel, but first we will put on some face powder because I think my lipstick is kind of drying I can open it. The one I'm using is the Healthy Balance by Bourjois. This one I found is lovely and it says um, hydrating and anti-shine. So that's really good because you, you do want to give your skin some moisture, but you also do want that kind of anti-shine properties. The brush I'm using is the Louise Young LY06S. Um, I think S is for short handle, it's just a little brush. This is lovely, it's so light, you know, not too heavy and cakey, but they just set everything nicely and help it to last. So, um, as I said, I'm just going to go over those eyebrows so that they're not quite so harsh. And then I also go over my lips, because I put another colour on top, and this just helps it to last. That's that. Okay. So, next we want to do some bronzer. The bronzer I used is Benefit Hula Bronzer and I'm using my Inglot 3P brush. Um, actually no, I'm not going to use that brush. I'm going to use the brush I used on the day which was this one, which is the Elf Complexion brush. It's bigger actually and it's a bit lighter. But the idea is build up, you know, because um, the last thing you want is to look too bronzed, isn't it? And I think this bronze is maybe a little bit too dark for me now um, because like I said I had been on sunbeds at the time I know that's very naughty um, and it is the only time in my life I will do it and I made sure I had a mole check before and a mole check afterwards um, and in fact I have a mole check every year so doing the lovely fish face I'm just kind of going around my cheek area so that there's a little bit of contouring but I can't really contour too much because I have a round face so I don't want to look too ridiculous I just want to give myself a bit of colour because like I said the more colour you have um, the better your photos will be, will be. so then um, some blush and I used this one which is 
already at the the bottom of the pan this is the minerals baked mineral blush by prestige a fresh glow um, I am assuming that is the color and I'm using a Ruby Millie face brush but this one has got ever so slight sheen in it um, and it's just a really really pretty color I think for for a wedding day and special occasions so I just put it sort of on the apples of my cheeks and then a little bit up um, just so that it's sort of lifted my face a little bit um, but I don't just want to stripe up there of course so I sort of start here and then just the remnants um, go up the remnants of what are on the brush go up here okay then because it's a special day we want to use some highlighter and I use this it's a candlelight um, Too Faced Candlelight Highlighter and I used the Sigma E50 brush which is this it's actually just a fluff brush so just take some of that highlighter and then I'm just going over the top of my cheeks here and I'm trying to avoid going here because I've got lines and I don't want it to attract um, attention to those lines so and you don't want to go overboard with the highlighter um, because you don't want to look too white um, but like I said I used this on the top of my cheekbones and it was absolutely fine in the photos a tiny little bit on top of the lip because that helps them look a bit fuller and then just what's left on the brush down the top of my nose okay next step is mascara and I used this MAC um, extended play and it just lasted me so well this is not advertised as waterproof but it was waterproof for me on the day insofar as I cried um, and it didn't budge and I chose not to put on false eyelashes um, I did think about it but I'm just I'm not somebody that wears them so I knew that they would potentially irritate my eyes I've only worn them in my life probably three times two or three times and um, yeah, if I don't put them on right, they kind of irritate my eyes. The glue can sometimes irritate my eyes. So I didn't want to take the risk. Um, and I didn't want to take the risk of them kind of hang, half hanging off because I knew that I wouldn't be able to do them securely. Uh, and because I'd been using Lilash, which is a kind of lash growth serum, then I knew that my eyelashes wouldn't be too short anyway. Um, so that's why I didn't choose to wear them. Now lipsticks, um, I took this one with me, this is L'Oreal Caress 01 and it's a beautiful pink colour, look at that, isn't that pretty, so that's what I took with me because this is a really moisturising one, um, but I put this one on which is Bobbi Brown Lip Gloss, Brightening Lip Gloss in Popsicle 5 and I put this one on just as I was leaving the house, so I had it right by the door um, and I just put it on at the last minute because obviously lip gloss is never going to last that long um, and I wanted it on fresh for the photos, so it's a beautiful pink colour but um, I like the fact that it was a brightening gloss so. There you go that's it done so that's my wedding day makeup done it was lovely doing that and having all the little memories coming back about the products that i used and um, i hope you found that enjoyable if you are into minds about whether to do your own makeup or not i would say that it's such a personal choice that nobody can really influence it but um, you'll kind of know in your gut what you want to do i did struggle with the decision i have to say i i thought that it was crazy and a lot of people thought it was crazy but I knew that I enjoyed the process of putting makeup on I knew that it was something that calmed me um, so that for me was a great way to start my wedding day and I knew that I could also look back and be proud of the fact that I did my makeup um, and it did come out well so I did find it a little bit pressured on the day because obviously you want to get it right but what I did, I was very lucky, I did have a makeup trial because that's another way of kind of helping you decide if you really do want to do your own makeup. Have a makeup trial and see how you feel about it. See if you like the result, see if you like the feeling of having somebody else kind of taking control if you like. Um, so I did that and that lady was brilliant so I actually invited her back to the, on the day to do my Maid of Honours makeup. So she was on hand and she had said to me, you know, even if on the day if you 
wake up and decide that it was a bad decision to do your own makeup then she would do it so that was really nice to kind of have that in reserve um but obviously not everybody can do that but i do think it's a good idea to have a makeup trial even if you're doing your own makeup because it did give me a few tips and tricks and she did talk through what she was doing and tell me things about wedding day makeup so that was really good um, but yeah I hope it was useful to you if you have any questions at all about any of the products I used um, any of the techniques I used any other kind of tips and tricks or any specific questions please do stick them in the comments and I promise you I will answer them as best I can um, so thanks very much again for watching and best of luck with your big day and I shall see you all again soon